Hey, it's Val. And in this video, I am going to share with you the 10 huge mistakes that you want to avoid if you're starting your own law practice. And I also wanted to say, you're welcome, because these are all 10 terribly costly, expensive mistakes that I made when I started my own law practice. You're gonna to wanna to stick around until the end of this video because I'm gonna share my penultimate mistake number 10, which is really the biggest mistake that you can avoid. And spoiler alert, it's a mistake that a lot of lawyers make. I'm Val, Val Hemminger, and I have been a divorce lawyer for more than 25 years. And I've run my own law firm for more than two decades. So I have the experience of everything that I'm sharing with you. So without much further ado, let's dive right in. First mistake that I want to say you're welcome about <laughs> is that uh, you don't want to spend a huge amount of time, money, resources, designing that ultimate business card, that ultimate logo that is in place of other business strategies. Now, sure, have a logo, have a business card, great, but don't spend the upwards of, oh gosh, several thousand dollars. But by the time I was all said and done, by the time I had my logo, my business cards, by the time I ordered them, you know, they looked really, really great. However, what I'm saying is that those resources and that time and energy could be spent much more intelligently, at least when you're starting your own law practice. Number two, make sure that you have a website and it doesn't have to be the fanciest, most amazing, most gorgeous website in the world, but do make sure that it works. So my number two, you're welcome, is that I had a terrible, slow loading, website that you couldn't find on your phone or anything. And I'd like to say that happened more than two decades ago when I first opened my law office. What I'm actually saying is that that was relatively recent when I upgraded to a sucky website. <laughs> so uh, yeah, terrible idea. I had this awful WordPress site. It was so bad. And I spent thousands on it, by the way. It was so bad that when people actually Googled my law firm's name, you still couldn't find it. And I couldn't figure out why my consultations, like my new initial clients, just like, like went right off the edge. Well, it was because I had a crappy, slow loading, oh, it looked nice once it eventually loaded, site that people couldn't find and it wasn't good on mobile. It didn't have any proper links to be able to phone us or email us. Oh my gosh. So, and by the way, I will uh, link here. It's actually an affiliate link. However, it's the websites I use. It's called Solo Build It. Build It. Solo Build It. Great company. Amazing fast websites. Very quick. Very clean. Uh, completely solid. Not buggy. All the great things. Anyway, and I'm saying this because what you want is you want your potential clients to be able to find you. So the third thing you want to avoid is advertising or spending your advertising dollars in the wrong spot. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you start your own law practice, what's going to happen is that people are going to find you, not necessarily your clients, if you're not careful, but people who are looking for advertising revenue, people looking for you to sponsor events, all that kind of thing. And what I did is I sponsored events and I took out ads in newspapers newspapers. Okay. It was back in the older days, of course, but newspapers in publications that were my, my audience, like the people who I wanted to attract didn't hang out. So if you're going to spend advertising dollars or you're going to promote something, or if you're going to sponsor something, make sure that it's going to be sponsored somewhere where your potential clients eyeballs are going to see your ad or your promotional space. I say that because I remember spending a lot on a newspaper section of an article for my law firm. And, you know, even though it cost me a lot of resources, resources that could have been better spent elsewhere, I didn't get one new client, not one from that very expensive ad. Now, the fifth thing you want to do when you are starting your own practice, your own law practice 
is that you don't want to be that jack of all trades, master of none. Now, I know what it's like. You know, you're starting out, you, you're thinking, okay, well, who am I to turn my nose up at a certain kind of work when, you know, you really just want to be able to have the work coming in the door and you want to make sure that you are going to be attracting those clients. So why be picky? So for me, what I did was I advertised that I did family law, I did real estate, I did uh, I did contract stuff. I did debtor creditor. I did bankruptcy and insolvency. I did all of these things. And so basically, guess what happened? In my attempt to appeal to everybody, I wasn't talking to anybody. And I appealed to nobody. And think about it. When people are going through a separation or divorce, do you think they want to go to some general practitioner who really doesn't specialize in family law, who really doesn't know much about what they're talking about? Probably not. And, you know, because people, when they're going through a divorce or separation, it's probably the only time they'll ever go through that, or maybe the second time for some people, sometimes the third, but not very often. <laughs> but when that happens, they want to go to an expert, a person who specializes. So put yourself out that way. The only caveat I would say about that, the only thing I would say, maybe not so much, is if you are in a one horse town. And what I mean is, is if you have, if you live in a very, very small community and you are only one of several lawyers or one of two lawyers, and really it's just not an issue about whether or not, you know, you don't really have to specialize because that wouldn't necessarily be useful. Uh, one of my be the best divorce lawyer students, uh, they live in a very small community. And for them, having the advertisement, the sign, just a sandwich board out in front of her office that says, yep, I do all of these things was very, very useful. But if they were in a larger city center, mm -mm, that wouldn't be useful at all. And that was one of the mistakes I made, which was, you know, big and expensive. So again, you're welcome. <laughs> you don't have to make that mistake because I did. <laughs> The number six thing that you want to avoid for sure, the costly mistake when you're starting your own practice, <gasps> avoid the shiny thing syndrome. So you know what I did? I was in this older building downtown in my city, a really beautiful older building. <gasps> and what did I want? What did I think was be so great is a ginormous marble sign. And when I say ginormous, I don't know, four feet by four feet that had that fancy logo that I spent all the money on, on it. And then I had a duplicate of that, but a bit smaller up in my office. Oh, how much did I pay for that? Back way back when I'm talking 2001, uh, over $10,000. Now in retrospect, did that bring me any clients? Nope. It not only really didn't bring me any new clients, I'm very sure about, it was kind of my idea about what a lawyer should look like, what a law firm should look like. It actually kind of drowned me out because in my city, it's relatively small. Guess what? There's lots of other firms that have marble signs out in front of their offices that look very traditional. So I actually not only spent lots of money on these signs, which I could have used that money elsewhere much more intelligently in the development of my practice, but it also kind of made me the same as everybody else. So it wasn't even useful. So what I'm saying is be careful of those shiny things, those beautiful things, that big fancy desk, that wonderful looking law library that you'll never touch the books on anymore, or whatever that shiny thing is for you like marble signs that are completely useless and you eventually just get rid of. Now, the number seven thing that you want to avoid if you're starting your own law firm, your own law practice is do not delude yourself to thinking that you are going to build your own website, that you are going to take the time to download the software watch all the training videos and spend the hours cobbling together a site eventually. I can't tell you time and time again, lawyers I work with, they say, oh yeah, my site, oh, I've really got to get that site up and running, but I haven't really gotten around to it, but I really should get around to it. And then two months goes by and then six and then a year and then two years. And there's so much lost opportunity 
in terms of being able to bring these potential clients in to see you. So it's much better because you know what? You have a good working site. Guess what's going to happen? Oh yeah. Your potential clients are going to find you. Going back to my site disaster before, what ended up happening when I mentioned it was slow, well, it was so slow that the people that, and again, I paid an expert to do this, an expert, but I didn't really check the kind of sites they built. I didn't look at their previous work. I didn't look at their testimonials, all that kind of stuff. So what, what ended up happening is people would go and load the site. It would take so long. They would give up. They'd go to another lawyer, one of my colleagues. So you don't want that to happen. And you don't want to believe that you are going to get around to building your own website. Now you can get a really great website, super clean, super fast, super put together for a very minimal investment. Now, as I record this, that investment is about mm, $1,500, something like that. So again, wow, $1,500 so that your potential clients can find you. Wow, that's amazing. And the thing is you can hire someone else to do that and reach out to me if you want to know who to hire because I've got that particular resource up my sleeve and as well, um, you know, my affiliate link, which I'm going to stick in the uh, show notes here, you'll be able to reach out to someone to help you. And again, I'm there for extra support should you need it. Point being, unless you are a web designer and it's really easy for you to desi design websites, don't do it yourself. Spend a little bit of money, a few hours of your hourly rate to hire somebody else to get that site up and running and working smoking well. Oh, hey, it's me. Uh, interrupting a little bit because I want videos like this to reach more people. So if you are enjoying what you see, if you're finding it helpful, please hit the subscribe button, which is somewhere up there. And also tell me what was the biggest takeaway you had with respect to this video? Leave it in the comments below and I will answer every comment, every question, because that's what I do. The number eight mistake to avoid when you are opening your own practice, starting your own law practice is, okay, this is what we know now, okay? Virtually every lawyer, I think every lawyer out there knows if you're starting your own law practice, what you need is you need software. Absolutely. I don't think, I think gone are the days of people just, you know, having uh, file folders with paper and all of that. There is software and lots of it that people are going to use. There's going to be law office management software. I use Clio. A lot of people are going to Clio because it's really great and powerful. Again, I'll put my affiliate link for Clio in the notes, but also this isn't me just being, oh, use my affiliate link at all. It is a skookum piece of software. So maybe you're going to be using Google, maybe Google Docs, maybe you're going to be using the Microsoft Office, uh, maybe you're going to be using QuickBooks Online for uh, for your um, accounting needs. Like the software that you need is, you know, quite a bit, isn't it? Well, that's great, but the mistake I made for years, and again, <laughs> I don't need to be cheeky here. You're welcome. You don't have to make this mistake because I did for you is that you want to make sure that you optimize the software that you do have. My goodness, learn and know how to use it. And if you don't know how to use it, well, what you want to do is you want to get somebody to help you, to show you how to use it. So as an example, I'm using Clio as an example. Clio is amazing and it's great for document management. It's great for organizing my clients' documents. It's great for saving stuff. But you know what? I had Clio for almost two years before I used it for any of that. Sure, I used it for opening client files and putting in their contact information and time entries and all that kind of stuff. Uh, however, I didn't use it at all for a big, huge part of what is robustly designed for. Instead, I had some other software, SharePoint, to do that. So what was happening is I had all these pieces of software. I was spending all this money across my team for these software licenses across the board without even having to do it, like without even needing that. So here's the true story. Do you think I sat down and watched the eight hours of Clio informational videos? 
that just never was going to happen. And I tried, just like people who say they're going to build their own website, I wasn't going to sit down and learn all the bells and whistles of Clio. Because, you know, I find instructional videos really boring at the best of times. And maybe you do too. Or maybe you're like one of the, my coaching students who just like, oh my God, she loves watching instructional videos. So for her, that's fun. For me, it's not. So depending on where you're at in that spectrum, if you're more like me, where it's like it makes your eyes want to bleed if you're going to be having to look at instructional videos. Uh, when you're starting your own practice, make sure that you have a consultant, somebody that can walk you through what you need to know. Because even an hour or two or three of a consultant's time can be worth its weight in gold of the many hours that you save being frustrated as you're learning the new software. So not only will you save tons of resources because you will ensure that you're not having all these duplicate licenses. You'll use the software you have to its best ability. You'll also save tons of time when you utilize your software properly. So that is a huge mistake I made and you don't have to make it because I made it for you. <laughs> the number ninth biggest mistake I made. And again, I'm sharing it with you because if you're opening your own law practice, and you are at, and you are wondering about where to start in terms of advertising, social media, all that kind of stuff. Well, here's what I'm saying is don't have a social media strategy strategy where you're like, okay, I'm going to have Facebook and Instagram and I have LinkedIn and I can have TikTok and I have this and I have that and I have this and I have that. Maybe one day if you're taking over the world, fine, but coming out of the gate, don't do all the things. That's what I did. Cost a fortune. How many clients to get out of it? Mm, probably not very many. In fact, almost an infinitesimal amount of clients did I get out of the deal. And it was a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort and expense because of course I hired people to do my social media efforts. So what I'm saying is the big mistake is you don't want to splatter a social media type uh, strategy where you splatter everything everywhere with no results. Pick one platform of social media type platform that you know your prospective prospects are hanging out in, on or where they will find you. Now, as I record this video in 2023, the place I think, and I am Absolutely. I can't believe it's such an unsung hero of the platform world is Google my business. Now think about it. If you're in a strange city or looking, or even not even in a strange city, even in your city, and you're looking for something in an industry you're not very familiar with, let's say, for example, you need new car tires. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to Google it. Great car tire stores near me or something like that. Well, Google my business, what's that? Well, what you do is you order what's called a Google pin and Google then sends you a little card and then you're able to set up this profile on Google. What does Google want you doing? Google wants you putting your business on Google maps. And so what that does, when you order your Google pin, have your profile, set it up, you are going to be on Google Maps. And what that's going to do is it's going to ensure that when people are looking for a family lawyer near you and they Google it, if you have a Google My Business page and it's optimized, very easy to do by the way, if it's optimized and you keep it up with a post, like fresh posts every now and again, wow, it will be a huge, huge source of potential clients coming to you right to your law office, wanting to hire you. So don't underestimate the power of Google, my business and think about if you're doing any kind of social media strategy, any kind of digital advertising, remember Google, my business is free, 100% free. Very, very cool. Now, speaking of Google, I want to bring you to the next really costly mistake you want to avoid if you're starting your own law practice. And again, it's a mistake that I made. Do not, whatever you do, use Google advertising as your sole source of new clients. Now, 
Nothing wrong with using Google advertising. It could be a great thing. In fact, if you're starting out and you have some advertising dollars available, it could be a really good way to get those clients, those initial clients coming in the door. It could be such an excellent way to get started. If you do do that, make sure you use somebody who knows what they're doing, an expert with great reviews, et cetera, et cetera, who ensures that they will have your Google dollars being spent the best possible way. Having said that though, this is what happens with your Google advertising dollars. If you stop spending money on Google advertising, that flow of clients that are coming to you, well, that's going to turn off. And that's what happened to me. Well, first of all, I didn't even hire an expert to begin with who did someone just said, Oh yeah, I could probably figure out that Google advertising thing. Yeah. I mean, I spent like three, $4,000 a month with really not any return whatsoever. And, uh, it was a real struggle. And so eventually I hired someone who knew more about Google advertising so that when I was spending Google ad money, then I could know that it was going to a better use. However, as I had those clients coming in and they were happy and spreading the word about the good work, then I could start turning off the Google advertising while turning up my Google, my business and other advertising strategies, other ways of getting my name out there. So when you think about it, make sure that your main or only source of new clients isn't just through Google advertising. Now I promise you, the 10th costly mistake that I did when I started my, my own law firm. And what I want you to avoid when starting your law practice is that you don't want to waste the happy clients you have. Now, the biggest source of new clients that say they came to my firm, consulted with us, met with us, as opposed to any other lawyer has had so much to do with what? our reviews. Now getting reviews is one of the most solid business practices you can do for your law practice. It works like you wouldn't believe. Do you ever notice, you know, if, uh, if there's a party or something, you don't want to be the first one to arrive. Well, nobody wants to be the first one to hire a lawyer. I don't know about you, but whenever I go, for example, and I look at a movie, I think hmm, that might be interesting. First thing I do is I look at reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. A lot of people do that. And they do that with lawyers. So the thing is, is that where I'd made my big mistake was I used to sit back in my haunches and just hoped that all these thrilled clients I had would eventually leave me some great reviews. Well, that was a really slow boat to China. It wasn't really happening that fast, but I had the great happy clients. So you know what I did? This is what I want you to do. I started asking for reviews. I have this little pre-prepared email and said, Hey, and I change it every time to make it personal, but Hey, Bob or Joan, you know, thank you so much for being our client. I'm so, you know, I'm so happy to have gotten to know you better and happy to have assisted you. And I'd really like to be able to ask you a, a big favor of you. The thing is, is if you were able to leave us a review that would allow us to reach more people that we could help. And it really does great things for our business. So if you'd be so kind, here's a link to a review site. Uh, and if you could take the time, I'd be so honored. And also if there is anything that you feel that we could have done better as your lawyers, please let us know because we're really open to your feedback and really always want to improve. And you know, sometimes clients say that they say, you know what Val, sometimes you seem too rushed, big shocker. You know, I kind of have this energy <laughs> fly all over the place. Well, sometimes that's daunting for my clients. And so one of the things when that came back to me, I, I will say to my clients, by the way, I have ADHD, I'm medicated. However, I can come across as this very uh, scattered energy. I just explain that to people make no makes, you know, just know that it's not because I'm not focused and it's not because I'm disorganized, but I, but I might give you that impression. So that just, you know, calms people down that came from feedback from clients. So, you know, don't hesitate to ask your clients for that feedback, uh, but also don't wait for reviews and hope they come and pray to the gods that they come. No, just ask your happy clients. Hey, would you be so kind to leave us a review? you know what your clients, they'll be happy to leave you the reviews. And, uh, one of the things in my law firm, what I've noticed, we always ask people, 
how did you hear about us? It always says, almost always says online or referral from a friend. Then we say, and what made you choose us to come and meet with us as opposed to another law firm? They always say, because of the reviews. So this is Val, and I'm so glad you're here, and I will see you next time. If you found this video helpful, and I hope you did, please give it a thumbs up. Because if you do that, then this video will be able to reach more people. And as well, if you want to stay in closer touch with me, please ring the little bell icon so that you can subscribe to this channel. This is Val. Much, much love.